Hello, this is Greg with the National Weather Service in Spokane. This is a special weather briefing for March 26, 2025. We're talking about the potential for severe thunderstorms across the Pacific North West, and some of those may occur east of the Cascades. So let's discuss this. First, this is a very rare severe thunderstorm event. We don't often see parameters like this uh, come together across the Pacific Northwest geographically. Uh, but also, it's extremely rare to see something of this magnitude uh, show up on the calendar this early in the year. It's March 26th, and our severe weather climatology usually doesn't get started until April or May. Let's talk a little bit about what we see here on the map. This is from the Storm Prediction Center, and the link to the SPC is below. Uh, we're looking at a slight risk of severe weather, and uh, for this part of the country, it's pretty rare. Uh, that is the yellow portion of the map here, mainly Western Oregon, Western Washington. Uh, we're looking at a marginal risk for severe thunderstorms in the darker green area, including much of the Spokane forecast area, and general thunderstorm threat uh, for the remainder of north central and central parts of Washington. When will these thunderstorms develop? We're looking for the development of severe thunderstorms over western Oregon by early this afternoon, moving into western Washington by mid-afternoon into the early evening. If we do indeed see severe weather over eastern Washington, it will mainly be in the evening and early in the overnight hours. What kind of severe weather threats are we looking at? Let's take a look at the Storm Prediction Center guidance for large hail. We see Again, the yellow area, mainly west of the Cascades. And in this particular instance, we see something pretty rare, uh, a hatched area. That's the dashed black lines here that uh, <clears throat> includes the threat for damaging hail. Uh, so there is a 15 to 29 percent chance of large and damaging hail west of the Cascades today. This hatched area is something we usually see in central and eastern parts of the country. Not often do we see something of this magnitude in an outlook for the, from the Storm Prediction Center in this part of the country. The Storm Prediction Center is calling for golf ball sized hail. So that's up to an inch and three quarters. That's pretty close to two inches west of the Cascades. If we get severe hail east of the Cascades, it's more likely it, that it will be slightly smaller mainly in the one inch to inch and a half kind of uh, hailstone and it will be fewer and far between. Also we're looking at the other severe threats like severe wind. That threat is pretty widespread across much of the state of Washington, Oregon and parts of North Idaho. There's a 5 to 14 percent chance. And that doesn't sound like much but for this part of the country, this is pretty significant for the Storm Prediction Center to outlook us in that. And damaging wind gusts are generally 58 miles per hour or more. And there's even a threat of tornadoes, which we seldom see out from the Storm Prediction Center. And that's, again, mainly west of the Cascades with a 5 to 9% probability of seeing tornadoes uh, within the areas highlighted in the brown, including the Portland metro area and parts of uh, western Washington, mainly south of the Seattle metro. So let's talk about the timing of this event. Uh, it's unlikely that we're going to see much in the way of thunderstorm activity today during the afternoon hours east of the Cascades. The frontal system and the significant lift with this system will be west of our region for most of the day. We do see some evidence from some of our uh, fine resolution models. This is the HRRR model, and it is forecast the initiation of some cells in the 6 to 7 p.m. time frame over eastern Oregon and southeast Washington. Now, there's not a lot of frontal forcing in this particular area east of the Cascades uh, this early in the event. But if anything does get going, there is the right combination of instability, moisture, and wind shear 
that these could produce some severe some some severe weather including large hail and damaging winds it's a low probability but potentially high impact kind of situation as we go later into the evening this is the 7 to 8 or 7 to 9 p.m. time frame we're looking at the the frontal lift moving in closer to the region and more widespread shower and thunderstorm activity moving into the Cascades and around Wenatchee, Chelan, and Omat. Uh, there may not be enough deep level instability and moisture for these thunderstorms to produce severe weather. The better instability will still be across the eastern third of Washington at this time. The yellow arrows are an indicator of the storm direction with these thunderstorms. Uh, looking at the wind profiles, we anticipate a north northeast storm motion between 35 and 45 miles per hour. So that's, those are fast moving cells, but they will be capable of producing brief heavy rainfall region wide and in areas with the better instability like the eastern third of Washington and North Idaho, it could be some hail and gusty winds accompanying these thunderstorms. And that opportunity for strong to severe thunderstorms will be higher earlier in the event. That is earlier in the evening into the mid-evening hours. Moving ahead to the 9 to 11 p.m. time frame, our confidence is high that there will be showers and thunderstorms east of the Cascades by this point, and brief heavy rainfall, maybe some small hail, our confidence is pretty high in that. We have moderate confidence that any of these thunderstorms will be severe by this period in the evening, but there is the potential, especially over southeast Washington and parts of the Idaho Panhandle, if anything gets going, it could be strong to severe. Now moving even later into the evening, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., the probability of strong to severe weather will be waning during this time frame, but there is still the potential for a little bit of gusty outflow and locally heavy rain, and there will be lightning uh, during this time frame as well. And through the overnight hours, this is 2 a.m. to 11 a.m., there's still an abundance of atmospheric moisture at this point, so there could still be some locally heavy rainfall with thunderstorms. But by this point, the threat of hail and high winds will be relatively low. So talking about heavy rainfall, this is the probability that these points here will receive a quarter inch of rainfall Wednesday night into Thursday. And while a lot of these probabilities look quite low, keep in mind, thunderstorms are frequently hit and miss varieties. So some spots may not pick up much rain at all, while others could exceed a quarter of an inch by a significant amount. So we do have some concerns, mostly over our burn scar areas of flash flooding or rapid rises on creeks and small streams. Uh, the top three burn scars of concern are our lower elevation burn scars in uh, North Idaho. So this is the Gwen wildfire scar in this person, Latah counties, the Texas wildfire in Latah County, and there's also a concern on the Colville Reservation of the Swawilla fire. Now these fires don't have a lot of snow on top of them. A lot of our higher elevation burn scars, especially in the Cascades, are covered with snow, especially in the higher portions of the burn area. So what that snow does is it absorbs some of that rainfall and reduces the amount of runoff. We'll still be closely monitoring all of our burn scar areas uh, during this thunderstorm event uh, for the potential for flash flood warnings. Here's our weather risk outlook showing mostly the timing of the system with the development of thunderstorms mainly along the Cascades moving to the east northeast through the evening hours and the yellow, or the yellow indicates a minor impact 
expectation, you want to pay attention to the oranges here. This would be the time frame of concerns for these particular geographic areas for the potential for strong to severe weather. All right, understanding severe weather terminology from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, there's a five tier category system here. Uh, a high risk of severe thunderstorms that is mainly limited to areas of the central United States and eastern United States, the southeast in particular. This, these are our big tornado outbreak cases, and this is not something that the Pacific Northwest just does not experience. <clears throat> On the highest end, typically, of what we could expect from outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center are the yellow areas here. We don't see that many slight risk areas in the Pacific Northwest, but today is one of them, so it's a day that we need to pay particularly close attention to. That means that there will be short-lived and or isolated intense storms possible capable of significant damage, including hail and high winds. As far as east of the Cascades, this is the green area so areas like Spokane, areas like Lewiston, uh, Tri-Cities, Walla Walla, you're in this darker green here where there's an isolated potential for severe thunderstorms, but our confidence is not particularly high. A lot of things have to come together just right for this to unfold tonight. And North Central Washington is in the general thunderstorms here. We're not looking for severe weather around Wenatchee, Olmac and maybe even Republic, but still good to keep an eye out for anything on the radar. And if you do receive warnings from the National Weather Service, to heed them. Okay, how rare are severe thunderstorms in March? Well, it's pretty darn rare. Here are some <clears throat> pie chart graphs to indicate how rare they are. And the period of record for this is from 1950 to the present time now. So how many tornadoes have been reported in Northeast Washington and North Idaho since 1950? Well, there's only one on our record book and that was 1966 in Garfield County. So of all of the tornadoes during the calendar year, this little tiny green wedge at the top accounts for the 1.5% of tornadoes in the state or in the eastern part of Washington and part of North Idaho. So it's very rare. And we are not anticipating tornadoes east of the Cascades today. As far as large hail reports, this is an inch diameter or larger. The wedge for that is zero. We've not experienced a hailstone, or at least we don't have one on our records that has occurred in the month of March, east of the Cascades. And as far as damaging thunderstorm wind reports, only 3% of those have occurred in the month of March. Our severe weather climatology really begins to pick up in March, or excuse me, May, June, and July. That's when the uh, colors on these graphs encompass most of the pie chart. All right, just a quick reminder of what severe weather safety is. You will likely see a severe thunderstorm watch for parts of Washington today. It may not be east of the Cascades, but a severe thunderstorm watch means that you should be, pre be prepared, be on guard, monitor for the potential for warnings. When a severe thunderstorm warning is issued, that means we see something imminent. There's something on our radar or we've received spotter reports of severe and damaging weather. All right, a couple quick uh, points about uh, flooding. Uh, our recent rainfall over the last several days, accompanied with the mild temperatures, record breaking in some instances, has led to increased flows on rivers and creeks. So keep this in mind, areas, small creeks and rivers are nearing bank full. And this is especially over the Idaho Panhandle where our mid-elevation snowpack is melting pretty rapidly. 
There's also the potential for rock slides over the next few days with this increased runoff, and especially if we see a thunderstorm hit some steep and rocky terrain, just the wrong place at the wrong time, we may see some rock slides. And it's also a good idea uh, in the emergency management community, and we're going to be stressing this as well, cold water safety uh, for outdoor recreation. Even though there will be some areas that climb into the 80s today, this is Wednesday, uh, the water is cold. It's still fed primarily by snow melt. Uh, it doesn't take long to suffer from symptoms of hypothermia getting into cold water, even though the temperature may feel warm outside. Coeur d'Alene River at Cataldo. This one is nearing its crest today. This is primarily driven by runoff from recent rains and some snow melt. We're looking for it to peak close to 42 feet. If you want to keep a closer eye on any of these rivers mentioned here, go to water.noaa.gov. The link is below. Uh, so uh, we will see high flows on the Coeur d'Alene River through the remainder of the week and into the weekend, but it is expected to reach its peak today. The St. Joe River at St. Mary's is a slower responding river. Uh, it's often impacted by backflow from Lake Coeur d'Alene. So as Lake Coeur d'Alene fills up, the water influences the gauge of the St. Joe River at St. Mary's. So this one will be high for the next one to two weeks following our warm-up and the amount of water entering Lake Coeur d'Alene. So in summary, we're looking for strong to isolated severe thunderstorms today. Best potential east of the Cascades will be between 6 p.m. and 1 a.m. tonight. Uh, the threats from these thunderstorms include potentially damaging wind gusts, so wind gusts of 60 miles per hour or more, uh, lightning, potential for large hail, and brief heavy rainfall. And as mentioned earlier, if there's anything that forms early in the evening, that will produce the best chance for any severe weather. We're looking at river levels remaining high in uh, North Idaho for the next week or two. So that concludes our recording for today. Thank you for joining us and be safe out there.